the great classic narrative of the civil rights movement has a very simple beginning, and that is December the 1st, 1955, uh, when Rosa Parks refused to go up her seat on the Montgomery bus and was arrested, and the Montgomery bus boycott followed. Uh, historians could also choose that the, the dramatic circumstances of uh, the sit-in by the four students at North Carolina A&T uh, at Greensboro in, on February the 1st, 1960. Those are the sort of very obvious uh, forms of collective protest that those two events spawned. Um, but the historiography of the civil rights movement over the last 20 years has consistently emphasised uh, the, the long history of civil rights protest in the United States. Uh, usually uh, historians will talk about, well maybe, m you, historians may well go back to Reconstruction and look at pl black political activism there, uh, but even in the period of uh, the full-fledged segregation system of the first half of the 20th century, historians uh, begin to look at uh, the activity of the NAACP branches after World War I and during the 1930s. They look at the uh, examples of p political radicalism in the South and uh, the involvement of the Communist Party uh, with cause celebres like the Scottsboro case in the 1930s. Um, but above all, I think what historians um, have focused on in, in recent years during this period, in the period up to the Second World War, is the way in which uh, African Americans in this apparently powerless situation find some way of trying to remedy their grievances. The, the significant point about the history of the civil rights movement and where does the history of the civil rights movement start is that uh, you, have this, you have this rising expectations on the part of African Americans. Service in World War II, migration to the northern cities where they can vote and vote for the Democratic Party. Uh, a northern liberal Democratic Party espousing the cause of civil rights. All of the ideological factors in the Cold War uh, advocating black equality. All of these factors create rising expectations on the part of African Americans. But the time and time again what happens is that those rising expectations come up against white intransigence. And it's that which forces African Americans to think, well maybe the traditional tactics of politics and of litigation can only go so far. And uh, it's at that point then that African Americans uh, decide at various times in different places and different times to take some form of direct action protest. Uh, and that's why people t tend to think of the mid-1950s as being the start of the civil rights movement.